Okay, I'm going to go over some of the basics to do um, an exploded, axon, um, exploded animation in 3ds Max from your Rhino file. So first thing, save this as a new file. So save as, I'm going to do for, um, for 3ds export and save. All right, so you need to think about how you want to explode this um, because you're but basically, when we import into Max, it's going to make a layer for every object. Um, if you if you want to explode every single object, like individually, as in like every one of these, then you can export it as a .3ds file, and it'll bring in all those files individually. But to save some time, I just want it to group my objects by layer and keep my layers. So essentially, anything on the same layer will be an object. So for example, select objects. My wheels right now would all be one object and I could just bring them up or down. And what I really want to do is I want to separate these wheels out to the side. So I'm going to make two more wheel layers. Call this one um, wheel left, call this one wheel right, and this one's going to be wheel, wheel back. Okay. Um, and I can change those colors just so that they're kind of similar. So I know that they're all ish the same thing. Okay. I'm going to lock everything else. So I don't select other stuff by accident. Okay. So then I'm going to select that. Oh, did I lock that one? Yeah, I didn't mean to select that. Okay. So I'm going to left. So I'm going to change object layer. Um, and my right, and I'm going to select that and change object layer. I'm going to do the same thing with disc brakes. So let's see where those are. I'm going to turn everything else off so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I have my three different wheels. Um, my disc brakes, let's put that back on. So I want those to also go in their own little separate ways. So I'm going to make two more layers for that. Disc. Break left, rename, disc break um, right, and this one I'm going to rename, disc break rear, or disc break, that's confusing, disc break back, okay. And then here, I'm going to lock those, unlock these, that one's already in the right layer, this one I want on. Left change object layer. This one I want on right. So select change object layer. Okay, so now they're on different layers. Great, so I can split this out. And the caps, um, the caps, I'm just going to leave alone because, like, you can keep doing this for every one of your individual things on your animation to make it super pretty, but um, I'm just going to give you the quicker example. Okay, so now I'm going to put these all on. The other thing, right now, I'm pretty sure that my axle and my cap are on the same layer, and I'm going to want to explode those separately. So this thing um, right now is on default, I believe. Yeah, as is, if you look at this frame, um, that and my frame are on the same thing. My frame I'm probably going to leave in the same place, but the cap I want to explode forward. So I'm going to make a new layer and call this, um, I have no idea what that part of the car is called. I'll call it front cap. And I'm going to change object layer. Um, I don't have it selected, that'll do it. Okay, change object layer and uh, make this a little lighter. So I know it changed. Okay. All right. I think those are all fine now. Um, great. So I'm now going to mesh the whole thing. So make sure everything is unlocked. Select everything. Everything's unlocked. Yep. Select everything. Type in mesh. Um, if you mesh it with fewer polygons, so let's just look at what it does for both. So I'm going to hit OK. You take a look at it. You see like those little triangles it's making? It's basically a mesh is, so a nerves thing. Okay, so Rhino goes in nerves. Actually, let me move this apart. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Okay, 
So Rhino produces things as curves. So see how these curves are nice and smooth right now? Um, except for those, did it? Oh, I think that's just because that has a lot of geometry in it anyway, but they are smooth, in fact. Okay, so it, it uses math to create smooth curves. So it, rather than saying, um, draw a line from point A to B, it's giving it a mathematical equation that, it, that makes this something curvy or a certain organic shape. Um, and that's kind of why it breaks a lot too, right? Because like if the math doesn't work out, the shape's unhappy, um, or if it can't determine what the intersection between two different shapes is, it doesn't work. It's like a really smart graphic calculator. Okay, meshes on the other hand are a little bit dumber. Um, and you'll notice when they don't have a lot of definition, they get really crazy looking. So meshes use a whole bunch of triangles to try to approximate the shape that the nerve was trying to make. So here, um, it's it can try to make this extrusion, right? But it's doing a pretty poor job of it because it doesn't have enough triangles to do that job well. So if I were to mesh it again, and this time I'm going to do mesh, and I'm gonna do more polygons, hit okay. Um, so now if I compare these two over here, so now this one has like, oh, look at that. It's like, oh, wait, is this the nerves one? Yeah, that's the nerves one, sorry. Um, so let's look at these two compared to each other. Okay, so now there's lots of little triangles and it's like, oh, it's great. It's super pretty. The problem with this is this is a whole lot of points for the computer to remember um, and it's gonna be really slow. So I probably am gonna pick something more in the middle. So I'm gonna get rid of these two. Select this, mesh. You know, put it in the middle, and you're just going to have to test and see what level of accuracy you're happy with and hit OK. Um, you can type in SEL mesh. That'll select your mesh. You can move it to the side if you want to. Um, and now let's export this. So go file, export selected. Here you're going to save it as a DXF. Um, and I'm going to call plant car 2. OK. 2007 natural is good, hit okay. Great, now we're going to open up 3ds Max. So look for 3ds Max. So 3ds Max um, is a mesh, basically works with meshes um, and segments to create forms. So it's different than Rhino. Um, and we could do a whole course that was just about 3ds Max. It's like a whole different little thing. It also works more parametrically. Um, maybe I'll show you that a little bit in class. But we're just going to use it because it's great for animation um, and it's good for applying materials. So we're going to use it more as a visualizer than as a modeling software. So here I'm going to go to File, Import, Import. Um, and I want to find wherever I saved that file. Let's hope I can find it. Uh, Micah, week five, that car two. And open. Okay. It's going to ask me like how I want to import this DXF file. How should it interpret it? So coming in at inches is good. Um, here, this is important. Derive AutoCAD primitives by, and here we want it to say layers. Um, blocks is no hierarchy, split by material, that's fine. So the reason we want it by layer is because otherwise it's going to bring in the whole thing as one big object. So like, for example, if I say one object, it would just bring in like the whole car is one thing and it's really hard to split apart then. Um, if we do layer, it'll we set it up to be by layer, right? So it'll make one object for each layer. So we're gonna do layer, um, auto smooth, that's all fine. You can like mess with these things to get things to look a little bit better when they come in. But generally this is fine. We don't need to include external references. Um, what else is it asking me about? Um, we wanna have all the layers, so should be a little check mark next to them, that's good. Um, spline rendering. So if you want, if you brought in curves, you could actually make them visible in here. Um, but we don't want to do that. So we're not going to enable them in the render or the viewport. We just want our surfaces. Great. Um, and I don't want to include any of that, I don't think. Okay, hit okay. Okay, here's our file. You'll notice it is all black. That's because um, it interpreted all the like the nothing materials as black. 
So I want to make some materials so that I can actually see what's going on here. Um, so I'm going to go to rendering and then to material editor and compact material editor. Um, I'm not going to get into developing really fancy materials right now. Um, we're just going to make a couple really basic ones. So um, this is my default. I'm going to select here. I can change um, the ambient light on here. So let's make that. Let's make it like a red car and hit OK. Um, that's my diffuse color. I can change the specular to a different color if I want. So let's say it like is going to have fuchsia kind of highlights ish. OK, and then I can increase the specular level. So if I increase that and you see kind of a preview of the material over here. So it's like red with like shiny pink stuff on it. Um, so you bring that up a little more. Kind of like a nice shiny car, right? Okay, maybe a little glossy, maybe not that glossy, maybe more glossy, I don't know, like that. Okay, that's my first material. Let's do one that's more of like a metal. Um, so sometimes like it'll have preloaded ones in here, which will save you a lot of time. There's like a whole, there's a lot of things you can do to make beautiful materials. But again, this is just quickly for the rendering. Um, so... It's a library. Do we have libraries on here? Probably don't have libraries on here. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's fine. So if I, what happens if I put this to metal though? So you can experiment with this a little bit. Diffuse, specular level. Um, so let's bring specular level up. Make it a little shinier. I think I want this metal to be a little bit lighter. Hit okay. Hit up, glossiness up. Okay, so that's just a little bit shinier. Let's do just like a flat black. Okay, um, so that'll be like for the wheels. Um, I think I also have like a second color on here. So maybe I'll make that like an orange. Orange, I want it more like there. I want it a little more neon. Mm, maybe there, okay. And again, I want that one to be the specular and that to be more of a yellow. So it has like kind of a different sheen to it. Okay, and then I'll bring that up. Make this like 90. Okay, so that's nice and shiny. This one should also be 90. They should be the same. And this really wants to be more of like magenta than pink. Okay, great. So I got shiny, shiny. Um, this one should be shiny too. That one should be way more shiny. 90. Okay. Um, Self-illumination means that it actually glows. So let's do one thing that's, that's going to mess up our whole rendering though, potentially. Okay, let's not do self-illuminating. Um, this one, what else do we need? So we got metal, wheels, cap, cap. Um, we need like a seat material. So let's just do like, I don't know, something light. Just like a light gray is fine and maybe not shiny for that one. Um, and then the flower and the plant and the peacock feathers. Okay, so this one, dark green. Okay, um, then maybe for the plant we'll do a light green. This might totally clash when we're done. Oh, well, oh, well whatever. It's going to be fine. Okay, and finally for the plant, I want to do like a really vibrant pink. Okay. Um, and maybe that can also be a little bit shiny. Let's make that like 50 glossy and like 50 specular. Okay. Great, so now I have my materials. To apply those materials, I'm going to select my layer, which is gonna select the object, and that's my axle, and then all I do is I click on the material, and then I hit this button, assign material to selection. Next one, cap bottom, I was gonna do this one, assign material selection. Um, caps, those are those tiny little things, those can be metal. Default, that's the frame, that should be metal. Disc break, all my disc breaks are gonna, Highlight together, and those can all be metal. 
uh, feathers, those are going to be that green color. Flower, that's the pink color. Front cap, that's going to be the metal color. And plant, that's going to be this color. Uh, seat, uh, I think we said it was this one. Skin, that's going to be that red, pink color. Uh, and then all the wheels we're going to just do is black for right now. Okay, great. So we have those assigned. You'll notice that, um, oh, this cat never changed color. The reason is it's inside out. Like if you could see the inside of it, it would actually be the right color. So I'm going to do um, two things to help fix that. So I'm going to select everything actually. And before I do anything else, I'm going to right click and say convert to editable poly. I just like those better. Okay. Then I'm going to select everything again, or select just this one, right click and go to, I need to like um, reverse the normals. Uh, NERMS toggler. I just did this and now I cannot find it anywhere. Um, Maybe a NERMS toggle. Let's see what that does. What does that do? So you click Alt to do that. Oh, this is a wacky shape. That's not the shape I started with. I'm going nuts. Where is it? It should be like toggle norms. It should say something like that. Um, hmm. Okay, let's undo a little bit. So maybe I didn't want to change to edible poly. Let's see if it's an edible mesh yet. Nope. I think it's just selecting and deselecting things. Okay, back to Enable Mesh. Now if I right click it, can I do it? Let's see. Um, polygons. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so sorry, shouldn't have converted it. Just go to Flip Normals Mode. And now when I click it with Flip Normals Mode on, um, I can get that mesh back. So I guess you don't want to convert it to Enable Poly, my bad. Moving this around. Clicking all those. If you double click it, it's going to like reverse what it already did. So you have to kind of be careful about just clicking it once, but clicking all the parts you want. Okay, there. Great. Done. Okay, hopefully nothing else is reversed. These plant leaves, so what's annoying about this is I didn't give them any thickness, they're just surfaces. So they're the right color on one side, but the wrong on the other. So maybe. Um, I can, I might just leave those. Okay. Do I flip mama's mood? Maybe I'll do like every other one. So some of them will be right side up and the others will not be. Okay, so some are going to be black on the back, some are going to be green on the front. I think I clicked on that one little piece. It's fine, though. Okay, great. So now I have all those all set. Um, you can always click on here and then click back over here and just make sure that you can edit things again. So I can still select everything. Great. Okay. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure, is this the full size? I'm missing like my little time bar down here, which is weird. Um, hmm, why am I missing my time bar? I'm not sure. Is it just like somewhere else? Is it hiding? We're gonna try to keep going and see what happens, I think. Okay, there are all my layers.
And if I make this small, will that bring my time bar back? Nope. Okay, it might just pop up. Let's see. So I'm going to go to set key and then I need my time bar to do this. Okay, make this the big size. Let me undo that. So let's see if we go to view, maybe. Um, viewport configuration. Reframe. No, cancel. Um, animation. Animation layers, modifiers, rendering. Let's go to render setup just a second. It knows it has active time segments. So that's a good thing. Okay, so it's not that. Um, Hmm, okay, we're gonna have to Google this. Sorry guys. So should have a timeline to be in the max. Timeline and check bar divisting from default UI. Okay. Let's see what they say. When clicking the mini curve editor in the lower left hand. Come on, computer, don't be so slow. Um the timeline reappears. I don't think I have anything open though. Okay, customize show UI, show track bar. So customize, show UI, show track bar. Really? Why are you not showing the track bar? Mm. We're just right up layout. Okay. Okay, we're any other suggestions? Not helpful. Um, okay. Sorry about this, guys. Obviously, you can fast forward through this, assuming yours is showing, which I'm hoping it was, and normally she is showing. It's really odd that it's missing. Um, Use track bar, frames, nope. Something wacky is going on. Okay. Try clicking on the top of the scene explorer and enabling time slider in this way, time slider. Um, I'm 
not sure. I'm going to restart and see if it'll just come back. Um, and so I'm going to end this video and start a new one.